this is Noreen from Joya Cards and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to my YouTube channel. Yay! For more of my Stampin' Up! card videos, make sure you click the subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be the first to be alerted when my videos come up. Uh, just to give you an update, I'm on the very, very tail end of having COVID and last two videos were a little, <laughs> little difficult, but um, I am almost 100%. I still have a little phlegmy in my throat. Um, I'm still really tired, but for the most part, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm out of quarantine, so I'm not contagious. And the only one of us that really got sick was my, um, 25 year old. He did get a, a bacterial infection and had to go on antibiotics or, or I don't even know. If, yeah, I think it was antibiotics. I'm not sure. Had to go on medication so it didn't go into pneumonia, which he's really prone to, but he's good. So everybody's good. We made it. So... Um, I might be a little out of breath, but other than that, I'm fine. Um, also, I, I give away the demo card. So the demo card you see today, if you're a first time subscriber and you put in my comments uh, your email address, if you're the first one to comment, I will send you out this card for free. I'll just mail it to, to you, so that's great. Also, this uh, stamping is out of the new catalog, the new mini catalog, the January to June catalog. If you need one, let me know. Put it in your comments, uh, your email, and I'll get your address. And also, celebrations going on, so you get all kinds of free stuff for placing an order as minimum as $50. So there's all kinds of really cute stuff in here. And I've got some of these as well. So if you need any, let me know. But today's video is mystery stamping for January. Yay. <laughs> so I'll put this in my, uh, my notes as well in my video. So you need a card base and we're gonna do um, eight by four and a quarter. Now the color of card base, that's totally up to you. But what you do need to do is you need to score. So I scored at one and a quarter, two and a half, five and a half, and six and three quarters. So take your base, whatever you choose, and score it on up. Now, um, I left it, you know, just like this at first. And I actually took just a bunch of uh, my, like, whisper white. This happens to be shimmer white that I'm using today. But... I took a bunch of Whisper White and I made all these cuts and I kind of played around with it first before I actually made my card. So my color of choice is Shimmery White. And then the next thing you're going to do from the same color cardstock as the base, you need to cut a strip and you need to do it five and a half by four and a quarter. No scoring. So, and it's got to be the same color as your card base, which is mine is shimmery white. So here's my two. And then you're gonna need a one piece of designer series paper, cut five and a quarter by one. The one I happened to pick was from Hydrangea Hill. <laughs> I can't, I'm totally saying that wrong, but cut one of these. Now, in my opinion with mystery stamping is you have to use all the stuff that's required, but if you add, I think there's no problem with that. So my rules, anyway, so I cut two of these. So instead of doing one, I did two, but that's just me. You're only required to do one. And then cut two of another designer series paper, or you can use the same, I don't care. And cut two of these four by one. And I used um, flower and field. So it's this really pretty, actually I mixed these up. This is hydrangea and this is flower and field. So swap that. So two of those. So like I say, uh, I think you can add. So I made four. So, but two is what uh, it says on the mystery stamping. And then you need to t cut two white, four by two and three quarters. Now I'm using shimmery white. So I use shimmery white through the whole thing. So white or shimmery white is fine. So I'm going to cut two of those. So this is your base of stuff. Now you can choose any greeting, stamp, inking, whatever, embellishment, die cut, whatever you want. So um, I'm going to now show you what I came up with. So I hope you took a break there and made your card and now the reveal for my card. So I put it in a regular A4 envelope just to show you that mine fits in a regular envelope. And here we go. 
and I'm going to probably have to show you in a different angle. So I'll cut this when I show you. But here is my card. Obviously, it's a bridge card, which normally this bridge, most people have this folded the opposite way and the bridge is in the front and there's something going across. But I don't like doing things regular. So I put it in the back and I have my greeting on the back. So I'm going to show you the um, front picture. So I'm going to take my video and cut that in and I'll show you the front when I stand it up like this. Here is the front view of my car. And I just noticed at the end of the video, I left something out. I forgot to put in these embellishments here. And they are these beautiful um, pastel pearls here. I use the white and the purple ones here, the dark purples. But anyway, here's how the card stands up. And you can see there's a whole bunch of 3D going on in here. and we're, we're doing something special inside here. But this is what the card looks like from the front. And here is the card from the back. You can see it stands up perfectly. It has a place to put in your sentiment and writing. And it folds up really nice in the envelope like you saw. So here's the front of the card. So my first step to make this card is I'm going to take my card base, my two white, and my one white of the five and a half by uh, one and a quarter um, strip. And I'm going to color these because I didn't leave them white, of course. So I'm going to be using the new Stampin' Up! Uh, blending brushes, which are in the new catalog. So woohoo! If you need to place an order, by the way, uh, you can go to my uh, notes of my video and click on the link, or you can go to joyofcards.com and get to my Stampin' Up! site, which is my first name, last name, dot stampinup.net. So anyway, Stampin' Blend. So I'm going to take a piece of scratch paper underneath. I'm going to ink up, and I'm going to tap off, and then I'm going to go in. And we are going to color both sides of this cardstock. So just stamp off, blend in. And the reason why I am using shimmery white cardstock instead of just whisper white is because when you do any kind of blending like this, it comes out much prettier in the shimmery white. So it, it just, it totally looks different. So bite the bowl a little bit and get out your shimmery white. It's not that bad. So I'm gonna do front and back. So I'm gonna do the back of this and I'll be right back. Now I'm gonna take Gorgeous Grape and I just re-inked my Gorgeous Grape so I have to be really careful. I almost like using my ink pads a little dry so I don't like put too much color when I'm blending. Like that came out with a little bit of too much color but that's all right, I can, I can make it work. So tap off and blend that right over the top. Not too, too heavy, just enough to get that little bit of purple in there. And don't forget to do the back. So blend, blend, blend. Tap off real good. Blend, blend, blend. And there we go. So that's my card base. Now you also want to do the same thing to my two little pieces here, which is the four by two and three quarters. So do the same thing with the balmy blue. Tap, tap, get that balmy blue on there. And then of course the gorgeous grape. Now on these, I'm gonna be using these for the background here. So you only need to do one side. You can leave this plain. So I'm gonna do one side of this and I'll be right back. Got both of these done and the uh, backs are plain. You don't have to do those. And then you're also gonna do it to that strip, the five and a half by four and a quarter. And you do wanna do uh, both sides of the strip. So I'm gonna do both sides and I'll be right back that you've got your five and a half by four and a quarter strip all inked, put that to the side and then take a piece of shimmer white scratch paper. Uh, now I'm going to be doing the grass down here as well. Whenever I do any kind of a grass die cut, 
I do actually like to create my own colored paper. So I'm going to be using the Stampin' Blends again, and I'm going to be using Pear Pizzazz, and I'm just going to do a little tiny strip. We only are going to make this little grass piece. So start with the Pear Pizzazz, and then I'm going to use Old Olive on top, and just it just gives it a little bit of texture. It's better. It's kind of nicer than using just regular cardstock. So that's all we need to do for that. Now for the uh, stamping and the die cuts, let me show you what I'm going to be using. Today I'm using Art Gallery and we're going to be using this flower right here. And we are also going to be using the rectangle stitched frames for the outside um, window. And this is the fourth biggest rectangle that we're going to be cutting out. I'm also going to be using um, this piece of floral gallery, which matches the art gallery to cut out, die cut out those flowers. And I'm going to be using dock dies for the grass down below. So let's start with dock dies. And we're going to take that piece of DS or the custom piece of paper we just made, and we're going to die cut this out. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. I just cut out the grass for the card here. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the little, uh, I forget what they call that here, but I'm going to cut that off so it just looks like grass. I'm also going to add a little bit more green. So I'm just going to take the bl blending brush that I used for Old Olive and just go over it a little bit more on my green because I want it just a little bit darker. Now that looks like that. Now we're going to go ahead and stamp the flowers and we're going to be using this die right here and the small one right here. So take the big die and I'm going to use Melon Mambo. I still like using my stamping pad to stamp everything. I really think it gets a better connection to the paper. So I'm going to do two of these. Then I'm going to take my um, my chamois here and I'm going to clean this stamp because we're going to stamp the same one two more times in garden green. So get out your garden green after you cleaned off your stamp and you're going to stamp two of these. So one, two. Now you're going to take this little stamp here and grab your gorgeous grape again and go ahead and stamp right over those flowers. just like so and do it on the other one as well. Now you're going to take out floral gallery and grab this die and grab some good tape. Um, I like to use the delicate painter's tape, believe it or not, that seems to work for me. And then you're going to line this up over your die and die cut it. And we're going to cut out all four of these dies. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. So you've cut out all four of these. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to cut the flowers off of the Melon Mambo one and kind of clean up the edges here. So cut off all the flowers, including the tops of these as well. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Cut all the big flowers off and kind of trim them up so you clean them up and then go ahead and take your silicone craft sheet, snail it up and put it right over the top of the green. So I'm going to put all the other flowers up and I'll be right back. Put all the big flowers on. Now I got to put all these little flowers on. So I cut off the first one and now I'm going to grab some fine tip glue because to snail these would be really kind of a pain in the you know what. So get your fine tip glue out and then grab some um, nice tweezers here. And you want to do these one at a time because they're so small and little you kind of like forget where they all come from. So, so just cut them off as you go. So don't, don't cut them all and then try to match them up. You want to um, do one at a time. So I'm going to cut those one at a time and glue them on and I'll be right back. So here's my two flowers with them all cut. Now all you're going to have left of your um, melon mambo piece is this little, little piece and you throw that away. So now our flowers are done.
Now we need to cut the hole in the card. So you're going to take your fourth largest stitched rectangle frame, put it in the center of that large space there, tape it and die cut it. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. So this is what's going to look like and make sure you tape both sides of your rectangle because they have a tendency to sh shift when you put them through the die cutter. And then you're going to have this piece left over and just it's something to go on another project. So all right now we've got this let's start putting the card together. First thing we need to do is fold all these score lines. Now I didn't fold it before I cut it. Um, I did kind of bend it here because the light over my die cutter isn't very strong. So if you want to fold this one before you cut it, that's fine. But I wouldn't fold much more than that. So this, um, so this is my front because it's got the stitched on it. And I'm going to take that score line and I'm going to go valley. So valley on the, on the front here and take your bone folder and give it a nice fold. And then you're going to go mountain over right next to where you cut that. And this is a little tricky. Like I said, if you want to do yours um, before you cut out your rectangle, you know, it might be a little easier, but I chose not to. Uh, now I'm not, not so sure if that was such a great idea, but yeah, I can do it. So I'm going to do a mountain here, being careful not to rip through my cutout. So we got valley mountain and then I'm going to put another mountain on this side. Okay. And then I'm going to do a valley on the last one. So this is what it's going to look like. Now, Normally, when you do a bridge card like this, it's usually the opposite way like this, and they use this to put in the front. That's why it's a bridge card. But I chose not to do that because I just wanted to do something different. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those four little pieces of DS paper that we cut out earlier, and I'm going to snail them up on the wings here. So I'm going to put one here. So only put it on the front side. Don't put it on the back side um, now because we need to put in our bridge. So now you got your two pieces on the front. Now let's put your bridge on the back. Now remember, this is the color strip that is the five and a half by four and a quarter. Now in the instructions, it said just one of a five and a quarter by one. And I decided to add and cut two instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece over the other one and go like this. Okay. And usually I think they wanted you to do that to put over the front of the bridge, but I'm not using it in that capacity. So I'm putting one on the front and I'm putting one on the back like so. And then I'm going to take my little base and I'm going to snail, I think the card, it's always good to do the card here. I'm going to snail this side and this side just at the ends. And I'm going to decide which way I want this card to fold because this has to go into an envelope. And this is like this, it's a 3D kind of box looking card. So this folds like so. So when I put on this bridge, I'm going to decide which direction or which way is up anyway. So I'm going to fold this and have this go out. So I'm going to put this in the middle all the way at the end and this to go all the way out like so. So now this mechanism folds. Make sure you don't have tape on the back of here because it'll catch on this when you fold it down. And just give it, take your bone folder and give it a little bit of an extra you know what to make sure that it naturally kind of folds this direction. So I'm going to just give it a, 
a bit more of a crease than I do the other side. So it naturally just wants to go that direction. So now you've got this piece up. If a little bit of glue comes out on this either side of the, uh, the bottom here, just take one of these gum erasers and it'll come right off. So now we're going to assemble the middle. So take one of your flowers and just kind of give it a quick little eyeball on where you want to put things and how, you know, where you want them to offset. So I'm gonna take this higher flower first, because if you notice, there's one higher than one, the other one. Now there is a reason why I didn't take my Stamparatus, color each part and just stamp it, because I wanted this to be almost like three dimensional, the whole thing. And it's kind of hard to tell in a video, but these flowers are quite dimensionaled up. So this first flower, we're gonna take the dimensionals and we're just gonna put down one layer of dimensionals. I use both the regular dimensionals and the mini dimensionals, just one layer, and I'm gonna put it right where I kinda of lined it up before, right in the upper right-hand corner of my um, piece. Then I'm gonna take the second flower and I'm going to put two dimensionals on each. So put a dimensional, take the paper off, and then take another dimensional, put it on top, take the paper off. So I'm gonna do that to all these. So now I've got these double dimensional on both the regular and the minis, and I'm going to put this right here, okay? Now I'm gonna take the grass and I'm going to put three dimensionals on top. So this is what it looks like. There are three mini dimensionals on top of this, and I'm going to take it and put it right at the end of the flower here. So it looks like that. Now I'm gonna take the butterfly gems and I'm going to put them up in the corner here. I thought that looked cute. Might actually use different colors like kind of like the orange by itself rather than the orange and the purple. I think the purple kind of blends in a little too much. So I might even use on this one, since this is my video card here. And don't forget that I do give away the demo card. So if you are a first time subscriber and you put your email in the comments, you could win this card. If you're the first one, then I will get your mailing address and I'll mail, mail you this card. So it's kind of cool. So, okay, so now we've got this part done. We put in our little butterflies and now I'm gonna take some tear tape because I really want this because it's heavy to not move. So I'm gonna take some tear tape and I'm gonna put it right inside here. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and put it inside and just kind of line it up. I'm gonna have to put my head in the camera, I think and line it up so it's straight and it's in the middle. And then just kind of gently lay it down and see how it looks from the front. See if it's straight and then press down because that's tear tape. So it's made to not go anywhere. Now at this point, you can use a little bit of Wink Estella and put it over the top. Just be careful with Wink Estella. It does smear ink. So I'd be just really careful with that. So give it a nice little press down and now we can do the back. So take those other two pieces of your DS paper. Remember they said only to do two, but I cut four because I want to cover up the back. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to cover up the back. So that looks much better covering up that back piece. And now all we need to do is the sentiment. So we're gonna take that other one that we covered, colored, that's that four by two and three quarters, and we're going to stamp, you are so lovely. There are so many good sayings on art gallery that that is just crazy good. And you've got that die, just want to say here that kind of match that, but I just, just, just didn't happen to use it. So I'm gonna uh, stamp this in Melon Mambo put it right there, then snail it up on that white side and match it up to the back of your flower piece. 
And voila, that's what you've got. And it closes really nice. And now I'm going to show you how it nicely fits in the envelope. And if you need to do a little bit of uh, extra scoring on it, that's fine. Just score it a little bit. And then just take your regular, you know, the regular envelope we always use and put it in there. And voila. Now, anything that has any kind of embellishment ever on any kind of card, take a piece of Whisper White and take one of your embossing folders, one of the really like the 3D ones and emboss it and then slide it in your card. So when it mails, if it's going in the U.S. mail, the embellishments don't pierce through your envelope. But that is the card and look, it fits really nicely in there and it's super cute. So like I said, if you are a first time subscriber, uh, put your email in the comments and you might win this demo card. So that's really cool. So that's it. Thanks a lot. Bye.